the number one reason why therapists are missing out on potential new clients is because someone else gets there first. Either they happen to be in their inbox at the right time when somebody messages them an inquiry, or they happen to not be in session and they answer the phone. Most people, when they are looking for a therapist, are going to reach out to more than one. They're feeling brave or desperate and they start looking for a therapist who can help them. They're not going to just email one therapist, they are going to reach out to multiple. And because of this, what tends to happen is the first person that they get in touch with and they like, they are going to book with. So all those other people that have been emailed and contacted are just going to miss out. So it really can be luck of the draw if you get there first. So in this video, I'm going to show you a way that you can make it much easier for potential clients to book in with you right away so that you can be the one that they see first. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Kim. I help therapists in private practice get online, get confident with admin and reduce tech overwhelm. So we're gonna jump into my computer now and I am going to show you how using Google Calendar's new feature, the appointment scheduler, can help you set up a discovery call or a screening call, whatever it is that you want to call it, so that you can add this to your website, to any social media that you have, and any directories that you're a part of. When somebody comes across your profile or your website, they'll be able to click on a button and book in with you right away. They will be able to book that screening call, that discovery call with you, so that they can meet you. Now, if people are able to book in with you straight away, they're gonna be less likely to carry on looking for someone else because they already feel like they have something booked in. And they're also going to be less likely to cancel that as well. So even if they do contact other therapists and other therapists come back to them asking them questions or trying to send them details about booking a discovery call with them, they are going to know that they have that booking scheduled in with you and confirmed, and they're gonna be less likely to go ahead with that other therapist. So it's gonna put you in a much better position to secure that new inquiry. I'm going to be talking in the video about using a paid Google Workspace account. So if you want to know how to set one of those up, I'm gonna leave a link in the description to be able to set one up and also to be able to get a domain so that you can have a professional email address, which would be kim at Simmons Counseling rather than simmonscounseling at gmail.com. So I'm gonna leave all the links in the description below, so make sure to check that out once you've watched the video. So let's jump straight in. Okay, so the first thing I want to show you is the difference between using this feature on an at gmail.com account versus a paid for professional at simmonscounseling.com account. So the important things to know about the calendar appointment scheduling is that you can only have one type of appointment set up. Now, if you're just going to use this for discovery calls, then that's fine. However, you will not be able to send automatic email reminders to your clients and you also won't be able to link multiple calendars. So if you have just one calendar that you use, maybe that's just you know the, the main calendar and then you use different colors for the calendar then that would probably be fine but if you have multiple calendars like i've shown you how to set up in previous videos you will need to use the paid for google workspace account now it says here that's 7.99 a month but you can actually get it cheaper by setting up a google workspace account and using the business starter so as you can see here, the business starter starts at five pounds a month, and that's going to be if you sign up for a one year commitment. If you decide to sign up and pay monthly, it's going to be six pounds a month. So it is a little bit cheaper than they say on this here, which says seven ninety nine a month. Um, so I'll leave a link so that you can sign up to Google Workspace, and I also have a video to show you how to get a professional email account too. So let's jump in to how to actually set up the appointment scheduler using Google. Google Calendar. Okay, so we are now in my professional Kim at virtuallyreplaceable.com calendar. What you want to do is head up to this create here and we're going to use the drop down and go to appointment schedule and we're going to create our first appointment schedule. So it's going to open the box for you and now you just want to 
fill in all the information. So the title might be discovery call, it might be screening call, whatever it is that you want to call the call where a potential client can book in with you to meet with you. First of all, you, that's what the title is going to be. So I'm just going to call this discovery call. And then you want to set your duration. So I'm going to do this for 15 minutes. And then you want to set your availability. So you probably don't want to have your calendar completely open, even though the system is going to check if you have appointments and things like that. You probably want to give yourself some specific days and times that you will accept discovery calls and clients contacting you. So it's set up automatically that weekends are turned off and then it's just nine till five, Monday to Friday. So I'm gonna turn off Monday because I like to get admin done on Monday. I want to do all my invoicing. I wanna set my week up. So I'm not gonna have any calls with potential new clients on a Monday. On a Tuesday, I do have some time in the morning. So I'm actually gonna change this from eight o'clock until 12 o'clock. So I'm going to open my morning up on Tuesday. So as you can see, the appointment has changed there to match uh, the time that I'm available. On a Wednesday, I'm available in the afternoon. So I'm going to do this from 12 till 2. On Thursday, I am going to be available in the evening. So here I'm making sure that people have opportunity to see me morning, afternoon and evening. So let's do this from 4 p.m until say 6 p.m. So on a Friday, I'm pretty open. I'm gonna just reduce these hours slightly. So I'm gonna make this till maybe three o'clock, nine till three. But I'm gonna leave that open. Although you might see clients on a Friday, it will take into account any appointments you already have booked in. So you don't need to worry about that. So you don't need to think, oh, I don't see clients only on a Tuesday between 10 and 12. And they're the only times that I can potentially fit these inquiries in. You do want to give some range of availability so that any potential clients can hopefully find a time that matches. So I'm going to leave that as it is now. So the next bit is the scheduling window. So they can book up to 60 days in advance to four hours before. Now I would definitely change that. I would probably change this to, I'm just going to move myself over here. I would probably change this to the maximum time in advance. I would probably change that to 14 days because what's going to happen is if somebody is looking for a therapist, they're not going to wait 60 days to book in to see somebody. So I would definitely reduce this to 14 days so that they can just see your availability over the next couple of weeks to see if they can book in with you. Now, if you decide to take a couple of weeks holiday or something like that, you can definitely extend that so that they can see you do have availability later on but I would definitely try and keep it to 14 days possibly even seven but that's up to you and then the minimum time I'm definitely going to change this to 24 hours I don't want to be surprised about somebody that I am going to see especially when it's a brand new person so I'm going to change that to 24 hours because then I can see at the end of the day okay what's coming up tomorrow and I'm going to know exactly who's going to be booked in I'm not going to get any surprises you know at lunchtime the next day with adjusted availability this is going to be if you are having a holiday so for example let's say you are having a week off in September so the third you're unavailable and then you can add on more there. So we can say, I'm also unavailable on the fourth, I'm unavailable on the fifth. So let's just take that for now. And you can also change it to say, you're unavailable all day. So you can change, you can make it times. So you can say, okay, on the 5th of September, I am available, but my times are changing. Or you can say, I'm just unavailable all day. So you can add things in like that as well. And obviously you can edit this at any time and I'll show you that later so that if you decide you're having a holiday, you know, in December for Christmas or something, you can then add that in when you decide what holiday you're going to take. Now here is if you want some buffer time and I would suggest having this. So basically what this is going to do is make sure it adds on time between appointment slots. You want to have at least 10 or 15 minutes between each of your appointments so that you're not seeing people back to back and you have time to switch between who it is that you're seeing. So I would definitely tick this on and I would probably put 15 minutes. 
in each one. So now it's not going to say that every single time is available. It's going to give you that buffer time in between so that people can't, you know, consistently book with you. And you can also limit how many booked appointments the system will accept in a single day. So you might not want to see, you know, 12 potential new clients and this probably isn't going to happen in your line of work but I would probably limit that and maybe say two or three you'll see you know a maximum of three new people a day so I'm going to change that to two it's not going to change this but what's going to happen is when somebody books an appointment if two appointments are booked on that day that day will just be blocked out and so nobody will be able to book anymore Okay, the next bit is the calendars to check for availability. And this is what I was talking about right at the beginning where I said it's only going to check one calendar. I have multiple calendars and I need to be able to use them all and I need the system to be able to check all of those calendars to let me know if I'm actually available. I don't want to have something booked in personally, um, which coincides with one of these times and somebody can book in to see me whilst I'm getting my hair done or something like that. So automatically, it's always going to check against your primary calendar, which is the calendar that is automatically given to you when you get a Google calendar. But you may have created new calendars and you also may have subscribed to additional calendars. And it's really great that it also will check against them too. So these are the ones I've set up, like the psychotherapy sessions. Um, but then I also have calendars that I've subscribed to. So for example, with this one here, I have like a bi-weekly coaching call, which is here. So what I can do is I can see now that that is going to be there every two weeks. So now instead of there being four sessions available, so four discovery call times available, there's now only two, which is great. And you can decide whether they're on or off. You can also decide on the color of the appointment. So my cal my primary calendar is purple. So um, all of my client sessions, for example, if I was a therapist in private practice, would be purple. But I would probably want these ones in a different color so they really stand out to me and I can see this is going to be a new client. This is a screening call or a discovery call. So I would add, you know, kind of like a ready color so that it really stands out to me that I have a potential new client. So then you go to next. Okay, so here is where you can put some more information on your booking page that people will see. So here you can add your photo and name. So this is going to be whatever you have in your Google account. So in the admin console, in the back end of your Google workspace, this is where you'd add this information. So it's going to bring that through. So you can't add anything here, but if you go to manage Google account, photo and name, it's going to open your Google admin console and here you can make the changes. The next thing is the location. So you'd need to select where you are going to meet. Now, the downside about this is you can't sync it with Zoom. So you can either do a Google Meet video conference and that will create a link for them. You'll get the link, they'll get the link and you can meet online as normal. Or you can do a phone call and you will get the potential client to give you their number and then you will call them. So that's how that one works. If it is an in-person meeting, which I don't think it would be for a you know discovery call or screening call, you can also specify a meeting location. Now, one thing you could do is you could select it's a in-person meeting and put your personal meeting room link for Zoom in that. So you could get around it that way, but I would probably stick to phone call or the Google Meet. So we're gonna choose phone call for this one. And here you can add a note that explains what's going to happen um, in the screening call. Okay, so I have just put here, hello, you are booking a discovery call so we can get to know each other and see if we are a good fit for one another. I will call you on the number provided at the time of your booking and will ask you a few questions about yourself and why you are looking at starting therapy at this time. You will also have the opportunity to ask me questions. I look forward to meeting you and you put your name if you want to. Um, that's just, you know, you can write whatever it is that you want about your call. Okay, so here you have the booking form. So this is the information that they must give you. So the first name, surname, email address, and phone number, they are all required fields. So the person will have to give you that information when they fill in this booking form. But you can also add additional fields. So if you look up here, 
you can type in whatever you want here. So maybe you would like them to specify whether they prefer online or face-to-face -face appointments. So you can do that. You could ask them whether they are private pay or going to be using medical insurance, something like that. So if you want to add more things onto the booking form, more questions, you can do that as well. So I will actually just go ahead and use the uh, private pay medical insurance question just to show you what it looks like and you can decide whether that's required or not required so i'm going to leave it unrequired for now and click add item and then you can see that question has been added there so here we can go to payments and cancellation policy so you can connect your stripe account to this scheduler and so that you can accept payments so if you wanted to open this up and use it so that clients could book in with you for their actual sessions you can connect it to Stripe so that they can book their appointment and pay for it straight away obviously for a screening call there's going to be no payments so we're going to leave this I'm not going to show you this part of it at the moment and then you can also add your cancellation and refund policy for paying clients. This is great to put your cancellation policy here. So it's really upfront. It tells them you can't book, you know, less than 24 hours or something like that. But for a screening or a discovery call, you probably just want to leave this blank or just say, please contact me via email if you do need to cancel, something like that. So you can add that there if you want. And then booking confirmations and reminders. So we're going to tick this on. So you and the person who made the appointment will get the confirmation email awesome so as soon as somebody books you will be notified that somebody's booked in with you it will be added automatically to your calendar but they will also get an email and then you can also do email reminders as well which is going to really help you with those no shows and cancellations so you can set this for whenever you want so this is automatically ticked on for one day before so you can leave that but then you can also add a reminder and say that you may want uh, one hour before as well so they're going to get an email reminder the day before and also an hour before. Obviously, you play around with that. You decide when you want to send the reminders. So then we click save. And you have now created your discovery call appointment schedule. So how do you get this information to potential clients? So what you can do is click on the share button. And here you can either add the link or embed it on your website. At the moment, we only have one appointment scheduler. So here you can see the single booking page and this is the link. So I'm just going to copy the link and then you can paste this anywhere. So you can put it on your website. You can put it in your frequently asked questions page. You can add this link to social media sites. You can add it to any directories as your preferred way that people get in contact with you if they want to work with you. So that's the link to this single booking page. I'm going to have copied the link. I'm just going to show you what that looks like now. I'm just going to paste it here. And when people click the link, this is what they're going to see. So here you can see you're booking a discovery call, the 15 minute appointments, and they are a phone call appointment. Click here on the show more and you can see the information that I've written about what this is. Here you can see all of the appointments that are available. As you can see, although they are 15 minute appointments, we've got half an hour time blocks. So if someone books at four, then somebody else wouldn't be able to book until half past four, for example. You can also see that only these two weeks have the blue circles because somebody can only book up to two weeks in advance. So if somebody wanted to book in the beginning of September, for example, there's no options available yet. So you might want to have a play around with that and see what works best for you and your clients. But that's how it's going to look like on the booking form for a client. So let's go ahead and book an appointment. So today is the 22nd. So we can't book any appointments for today because the minimum amount of time is 24 hours. So let's book an appointment for Thursday at 4pm. So I'm just going to click on this appointment. It's already filled in some of my information because Google knows me. So I'm now going to add in my phone number and then we've got the question, will you be funding privately or using medical insurance? And this is an optional question. So you can either fill this in or not fill this in. I'm just going to put private. So now I have filled in my form and I'm going to book that appointment. Okay. It tells them that I'm going to call them on this number and then I'm going to click close. So I've got an email to tell me that somebody has booked with me and this is the information here. And then if I head over to my email that I gave as my personal email, it also has the exact same thing. So it gives me the information here of the booking that I have made and I can add this to my calendar and things like that. 
So this is the email that I will get. Now at 4 p.m. on the 23rd, I'll also get a reminder. And at 3 p.m. on the 24th, I will get my second reminder. So, and they will look very similar to this. If we head back to the calendar, you can see that Kimberly Simmons has now booked an appointment and you can see the appointment there. If you want to edit the appointment scheduler or find the link or anything like that, if you just click anywhere here, so anywhere on these little icons, you can edit here. So it's going to open this box up again so you can make any edits you want if you wanted to adjust the availability or change the way that you're doing the bookings maybe you want to change them to google meet or something like that you can make any changes there or what you can do is you can click on share so you can get the link for this booking uh, page or you can get the website embed code here so you can decide whether you have a button with a pop-up so you click on the button and then it's going to open your booking page or whether you want to embed the booking page directly onto your website so that you could say book a discovery call with me and then they can literally click in your website on the day and time that they want and follow the same procedure that they had on that booking page so they are the two ways that you can add it to your website and if you just want to add it to all the social links and things like that you can just copy this page here i really hope you found that video tutorial useful so you can set up your own discovery or screening call scheduler so that potential clients can book in with you without any fuss, any hassle and any stress. If you did find this video useful, I'd love you to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you are finding my videos useful at all. Again, don't forget to check out the links in the description so you can get your own professional Google workspace and email address. I really appreciate you being here. Thanks so much for watching.